I think that you are one of the world's best experts in politics. I mean, I mean this. You understand both sides, and you've been associated with both sides. Tell us, other than your personal relationship, what influenced you to switch political views? I have never switched political views. Thank you for the question. I have been a registered Republican since I was 18 years of age and one of the founders of Young Republicans at UC Davis. So that has been consistent. People often mistake that I was a Democrat. I was married to a Democrat, so made for an interesting household. But uh, yeah, I have never, ever switched parties. I have always been very consistent, but uh, the heart chooses what the heart wants. And so in San Francisco at the time, believe me, Gavin Newsom was the most conservative, fiscal conservative, um, additionally, candidate and individual running with a very good you know, work ethic. But, you know, over the evolution and you're talking about two decades now, the party that we once knew as the Democrat Party has really evolved into a very liberal, um, excessively progressive party that you would not recognize. And we say, you know, this is not your, you know, grandfather or uncle's Democrat Party anymore. It's been taken over by a fringe that is a very aggressive, a very radical left. And it's upsetting to see because now we see a less of an ability to work in a bipartisan fashion. We see a lot more vitriol. We see lawfare um, happening on every level against President Trump. And it's, you know, it's very disturbing. Um, but this is the world that we live in today. And I think that's why there's such big choices to be made in 2024. Big choices. And it's just so, everything you said I agree with, and it's just also very sad. We've lost our joy. I mean, Mm -hmm. from your perspective, because you have been on both, you've lived with with Gavin, and now you see what's going on firsthand. How did we get here? Where do you think this came from? Yeah, I, you know, it got worse definitely after COVID, that is for sure. Mm -hmm. But there just has been such a push, a radical element um, to really destroy the American values, destroy the American dream, um, destroy the America first movement. There has been such a level of anger and, um, you know, towards President Trump, towards the movement that I think it's forced the left to go even further to try to make their point. And I don't know, I just, I think there's a way out of this, you know, with the election this year coming up and why I think it's incredibly important to take back, you know, the White House because we are under, you know, an administration with Joe Biden that is just completely representative of a dereliction of duty. You know, every state has now is essentially a border state. We have people pouring in through the border. It's complete chaos, uh, carnage, excessive crime, a real crisis for public safety in this country, like we saw with the murder of Lake and Riley. And this is terrible. And it's all goes back to the White House with Joe Biden reversing several key, you know, Trump era border protections like remain in Mexico policy and uh, Biden brought back catch and release. And we can fix this on day one. And I say this because in your introduction, you did highlight, you know, my career as a prosecutor in both Mm -hmm. San Francisco, Los Angeles district attorney's office. I've worked and headed up gang units, homicide, career criminal. Um, You know, it's just, and I've seen it. I've seen the scourge and how bad that it has gotten. But when you think about it, we have not had a crisis like this in you know decades. Um, what we're seeing right now and the fentanyl, the drugs pouring in across the border, and we have no idea how many people have come in through the border that are from all, you know all different countries. Okay, and don't be surprised. I mean, be on high alert for another you know terrorist attack because Joe Biden has allowed these people to come in. I mean, it's absolutely catastrophic. And let me tell you something. DHS Secretary, you know, uh, Mayorkas has bragged about all this. You know, there's been just a real sharp spike in suspected terrorists at the border, a sharp spike in the number of Chinese nationals at the border. And that's only the ones that we know about. How many are evading authorities entirely at this moment? I live in New York, so I know. (laughs) This keeps me up at night. I live in New York City, so I agree. And nobody could disagree about the border problem, and it's out of control. When Donald Trump was the president, at least he invoked an executive action to start building a wall. So Mm -hmm. day one, do you think that he'll be able to pass an immigration policy? Um, Yes, I do. He's going to be able to do it by executive order. He does Mm -hmm. not need to get any consensus to do so. Mm -hmm. He can implement 
uh, remain in Mexico, end the catch and release that Biden reinstated, continue building the wall, put in key officials, get Tom Holman back in ICE. Um, he can also reinstate Title 42 public health border protections because we have a fentanyl crisis that is killing far too many innocent lives. So that is another very important legislative tool that he will be able to do that is actually going to help save lives. And not to mention the human and uh, trafficking, the sex trafficking of children. The whole thing is just a humanitarian a crisis and disaster. And there needs to be some leadership from Mexico as well. And they have an election coming up. Um, and I hope that my dear friend Eduardo Verastegui will be elected president of Mexico. And then you will really see things shape up in quick order. Executive order. I love that. Let's move on to Israel. What position do you think America should formally take to support Israel? Well, listen, we have someone who is a Hamas apologist, okay, in the White House. That's who he is. That's Joe Biden. Say his name. He should be thrown out of office. And so should every elected official that is actually supporting and sympathetic to terrorists. Okay, we cannot be a country that is a state sponsor of terrorism. It is unacceptable. And by the way, let me tell you something. If President Trump was in office, you would not have that crisis occurring. You would not have the crisis and the war with, between Russia and Ukraine. The whole thing is absolutely outrageous. And it's very disturbing to me that we have any elected official that would sit there and try to support Hamas over Israel. OK, Joe Biden is playing petty politics with security at home and abroad. He is making the world less safe. OK, he has refused repeatedly to take a strong stance on Israel. He has refused to articulate any sort of Biden doctrine. And he has quite frankly, emboldened a state sponsor of terrorism in Iran by unfreezing billions of dollars in Iranian assets. And he has continued to support what seems like endless cash to Ukraine, doesn't care about the people at home, to continue a war where there is no clear path for what victory even looks like or what the goals are. And Ukraine, just so you know, from the polling that we've done, is not a top issue for the vast, vast majority of American voters. But it is a top priority for the swamp, OK, for the D.C. swamp, for the NGOs and for defense contractors. So ask yourself that question and follow the money. But this is a part of a bigger picture where Joe Biden continues to put Americans last and Donald Trump wants to put Americans first. Americans are suffering right here at home under the cost of the Biden agenda. They are far worse off than they were when President Trump was in office. And that's why Biden has no campaign strategy so, other than trying to jail his political opponent to try to take him off the ballot and one witch hunt after another, which, by the way, only galvanizes support for President Trump yep. with money, funds coming in and support higher numbers now with independents, libertarians, Latinos, African-Americans. Mm -hmm. um, he is making gains in demographics that we have never even seen the likes of before with younger voters as well. So the president uh, continues to defy in every sense of the word, political gravity, and is now pulling better than he ever has. And that is including going back to 2016. That's the strength and the power of this America First movement. And I know people are going to show up at the polls because they're not going to let what happened in 2020 happen ever again. And I think it's this election that we have to get it done. Because can you imagine four more years of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? <laughs> the country can't survive it. No. I mean, look economy. It's it's unbelievable to me. And the Fed just keeps, you know, printing money. We're trillions of dollars in debt. So we need really strong, robust leaders in there. And that includes in Congress and in the Senate so that we control the committees and we can get some more incredible conservative justices appointed. So I just want to stay on Israel for one moment before. And I heard and I do believe that uh, this would have never happened if Trump was still the president. We would not. This We, we see what happened in Afghanistan. We see what happened in, in with Putin. We, we all agree this would not have happened. But practically speaking, if and when Trump becomes the next president, what will he do the second term to eliminate Hamas and protect Israel's safety? Practically, what do you think he'll do? Well, I mean, President Trump needs to work closely with Israel. It's not President Trump's job to eliminate Hamas, but he should be very specifically engaged with sanctions, with not funding any of these state sponsors of terrorism. There has to be checks and balances and punishment 
levied against people who do so, that we will not do business with them, mm -hmm. that we will not in any way support them, any way, shape or form. But President Trump has always been a tremendous, strong ally and supporter of Israel, and he will continue to do so. In fact, he has pledged to do so. He will work very closely with them to make sure that they have the resources, the support and the might of the American military and political establishment to be able to support them. We're going to go viral with this, Kimberly. Let's talk about Ukraine. No one seems to be talking about Ukraine now that Hamas attacked Israel. And again, we said earlier that if Trump had been the president, this probably not, would have not happened. Do you think that Putin was behind this to take the world's focus off of Ukraine? Now we're getting into a conspiracy theory, I think. Okay, so we can uh, then move on. All right. I, I know I, some people. I know some people think that. Mm -hmm. I think when you have an absence of leadership and mm -hmm. strength mm -hmm. in the White House, which is what we have right now, mm -hmm. evil and nefarious forces will seize that power vacuum and move to subvert anyone that is against them and to try to establish their own goals and agenda. So what happened is, is that Joe Biden emboldened Vladimir Putin. Joe Biden emboldened and is in bed with China. That's why you see all these forces across geopolitical arenas moving to try to gain advantage, seize land, et cetera, because President Trump isn't in the White House. So this was a little and no surprise to me whatsoever, just like China with Taiwan. They're going to do that when you don't have anybody there. Right. What, right. Minding the storefront, they're going to go in and take the opportunity to steal and to create a situation for them that's advantageous. One thousand percent. Putin would not be doing this if Trump was in. It's just not it would never happen. And that's the problem. The world cannot afford to be this unsafe. Mm -hmm. The world cannot afford to have this lack of national security. When America is weak, the whole world suffers. Mm -hmm. When America is strong, everyone else is lifted up. So what do you think the United States role should now be in NATO? Listen, I've never thought much of NATO. I don't see them accomplishing much. I see that they're a very weak organization. Um, there needs to be a lot of reform there. I do not believe in throwing money, American dollars and taxpayer dollars at a uh, inefficient uh, organization like NATO. And when President Trump was in, he held them accountable. Everyone wants the, the United States to pay for all their problems and mistakes. But President Trump always said, you're going to pay your fair share. It's no more that the United States is going to be the, um, you know, check writing to wayward teenagers every five seconds. It's ridiculous. And people have to put in and be responsible for their own country's sovereignty, national security and safety of their citizens as well. I think they've actually listened. I, they've heard him. They're doing it now. So they're, they're afraid to what's about to happen. Let's move on to New York, which is my hometown. I'm a native New Yorker, and I've lived in Trump buildings, and I've stayed in his hotels. And I, person right. and I personally think he builds a fantastic building, and he really did build the New York skyline. And I think it's yes. pathetic what's happening there. here. Yes. I mean, it's crime is up. Police officers are getting shot. The National Guard is in our subways. If and when Donald Trump becomes president, what do you think the first thing he's going to do to save New York? Well, listen, I mean, that's, you know, a place that's near and dear and close to his heart. He mm -hmm. finds it, uh, you know, physically and morally repugnant that there is absolute, complete lack of public safety, that mm -hmm. people cannot walk the streets, that people cannot take public transportation and use the subway without worrying about, one, getting fentanyl poisoning off of something in the subway, let alone getting mugged or knifed or raped on the streets. But you have a complete dereliction of duty there from a public service. Uh, aspect of it with the DA's office and the AG, because the only cases they care about bringing are against President Trump instead of actually making sure that the city is safe. And I mean, you saw last week in New York, you know, President Trump attended the wake of the fallen officer, God bless him and his family and his child, you know, Jonathan Diller, who's killed in the line of duty. The police are not even safe there and no one has backed them up. You know, it was just a routine traffic stop in Queens, but nothing's routine in New York anymore. 
And this is a, a problem that I care deeply about because the man arrested was a career uh, criminal with over 20 prior arrests. Why was that person out on the streets? There needs to be bail reform and not just in New York, throughout the entire country to make sure that we are protecting the citizens and having people behind bars who have committed crimes that are criminal recidivists. Repeated the criminals. The case, that officer would be alive. Mm -hmm. Had that been the case, Lake and Riley would be alive. And so what do you think is the first thing he's going to do? Well, he'll probably take a good look at it, but he's certainly going to make sure that the police departments there have the resources that they need. He has been the greatest president for law enforcement. That's what you have to do. Like when Rudy Giuliani was in and he made sure America's mayor that New York was safe, the streets were clean and ending this nonsense that's going on there. Um, there has really been a dereliction of duty. These people are actually costing American lives. And why do you think people want to flee from New York? I don't want to live there. People are coming to red states that are sensible, that care about law and order and about, you know, criminal justice being actually effectuated and making sure that we don't have all these people go out in a revolving door. It's like a reward. You let they commit a crime. They give you a false name. You let them out. They go commit another crime. And let me tell you what else is going to happen. It's going to become much more safe. New York is a big problem. It all intersects back because of the border crisis as well. So guess what? Mass deportation. All those people who came into this country disrespectfully, illegally need to go by back to Mexico or wherever you came from. And don't try to cut the line. My father came here and became a United States citizen and he did it the right way. OK, from Ireland. It doesn't matter what country you come from. Do it the right way. Don't cheat another family that's been waiting in line because they decided to actually follow the rules. Do not reward somebody who their first act in this country is committing a crime and acting in flagrant disregard of our laws. Does that include that squatters? Board. Will that include the squatters? Yeah, get the squatters out too. Can you imagine that? It's just ridiculous. People are like, oh, I'm going to come squat in your home and own it. Oh, no, you're not. So yesterday on the Miller Report, we had Virginia Fox, and she is fantastic. She's a congresswoman in North Carolina, as you know, oh, yes, and she loves great. Donald Trump. And we talked about the universities, and we talked about following the money, and that half of the a billion dollars a year are given to these Ivy League institutions, foreign governments, Middle Eastern countries supporting these universities. When Donald Trump becomes pre president, how are we going to fix that? Well, he'll figure it out. He's a smart guy. But I think, you know, we cut that off. I mean, there's a, a way and an ability to actually put together some legislation to stop that, because, I mean, it's essentially buying United States you know, right. universities to subvert them and to indoctrinate. And I do believe as a former prosecutor in following the money and seeing exactly who is putting money in. That's another thing, which is also why are we allowing all these Chinese companies to buy, you know, U.S. steel companies, et cetera. I mean, it's happening right in front of our eyes. But like, wake up, people. But you can do something about it. Trump will put a stop to it for sure, because he cannot stand that. Like he wants this country to be strong and robust with an incredible infrastructure and manufacturing and lift this economy up with American jobs, American ingenuity, American entrepreneurship. Stop exporting our our companies, our values, our livelihood, it's only making America uh, weak and it's hurting American families. They, are, they have to work so much harder and make so much more money now than they did when President Trump was in because of Biden to be able to even make ends meet, to just scratch the surface, to still be able to pay the bills. That's can, wrong. Can you name one Democratic city that's doing well? No, I cannot. I mean, I don't think that's a trick question. No, they're so, all yeah, doing terribly. I, I, and you know, look at the facts, look at the science, you know, behind it and the data. Right. Yeah, it's for a reason. I mean, you know, look what's happening in Detroit. Look what's happening in Chicago. I mean, do you want to go there? No. I mean, I feel worried about you in New York. Like, I don't even know what you're still doing there. <laughs> I'm trying I'm to Florida. <laughs> I, I'm trying to save our city. I'm, All in, right. I'm in taxi cabs. I like, the, I like that you're doing that. I'm God doing bless. this. I'm trying to get the word out. I'm doing my piece. My parents are Holocaust survivors. They came here God legally. And this is my message to try and get voters out. So only the educated people seem to be the one that vote, but we need to get everybody to vote. We need to get only 23% came out and voted last year. And I think it's very important that we get the word out. And that's why I'm doing this. And well, I people think, oh, it's a, you know, it's a shoe in and he's going to win and this and this. It's never a shoe in. Mm -hmm. Don't ever make that assumption. If you assume you're failing, 
Just make it happen. Get out there. Don't be lazy and vote. Otherwise, I don't want to hear you complaining. That's all I have to say. Everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kimberly. I can't wait to see you this summer. And this yeah. has been fantastic. And you're, I think you should be attorney general. Thank you're you. very sweet. Well, you keep up the good fight, okay? And Thank I'll come you. visit you as soon as you clean up in New York. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Kimberly. Have a all good right. day. All right. God bless Bye-bye. you and your family. Take Bye. care.